Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Flagler County Planning and Boarding Development of November 14th, 2023. Madam Clerk, can we please have a roll call? Michael Boyd. Here. Timothy Connor. Jack Corbett. Here. Um, Heather Haywood. Here. Mark Langello asked to be excused. He just walked in. Really? I'll leave. All right. <laughs> All right. And then Anthony Lombardo. Here. <clears throat> and Fernando Melendez is um, asked to be excused. Will everyone please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The Planning and Development Board observes rules established by case and law and by board policy for the conduct of all of these public hearings. The audience should refrain from clapping, booing, shouts of approval and or denial and disagreement. I avoid, to avoid potential legal ramification and possible overturning of a decision by the courts, a public hearing must be fair in three aspects. That is form, substance, and appearance. We will observe the following time limits. Staff will have 10 minutes for their presentation. The applicant has 15 minutes. Public comments will be limited to three minutes and extended to five if you are speaking on behalf of a group and 10 minutes, e 10 minutes each will be provided to the applicant for any rebuttal comments and to staff for any closing comments. The first application for our agenda this evening is application 3391, which was continued from our October 10th meeting. It is a quasi-judicial recurring dis requiring disclosure of ex parte communication. Does anybody have anything? Hang on, oh, Gina. the minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Say it. Yep. Yes, the minutes. Um, item number three, approval of October 10th, 2023 regular meeting minutes. Make a motion. We approve the minutes. Second. Now we'll go back to... All in favor. Oh, all in favor. Aye. 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 All in disapproval. All right, number four. Variance from the continued from October 10th, 3391. Anybody have anything else to add to what you do or don't need to disclose? Okay, staff. Doing things a little, we just make it harder, don't we? Uh, looking for the staff report on this one. And so that uh, we did have some correspondence that went back and forth. You probably saw it over uh, the last few days after the publishing of the agenda. And so I'm looking through here to see what I can provide to you uh, with that. Looks like the staff report did not make it in the agenda. And so what we, what we had had was the uh, same staff report, but then you had the addition of the HOA review letter that had come uh, talking about their objections. And then in the time since then, you had a, a schematic that I believe shows an eight foot uh, rear setback. And then uh, mentioned from the HOA that that would work with them along with the decrease in the amount of the pavers uh, that Ms. Prakarski had, had come back and offered. Uh, and then that, that would then meet the HOA's uh, requirements. So it would be a reduced variance, as I understand it, uh, down to a two-foot rear. Uh, I'll look to uh, the applicant to confirm that. And then the other request from the HOA was that uh, if, if this is ultimately approved by the Planning and Development Board, uh, that the variance be required to uh, provide a as-built 
uh, as, a, as a demonstration of the completion to meet the conditions. And that's something we need for our permit also. Uh, but that as-built survey demonstrating that it, it meets the minimum rear setback uh, that, that the variance is, is provided for. Uh, with that, I'll close. Uh, Await any questions or comments. I think we'll both, uh, all of us will benefit from the presentation from the applicant. All right, thank you. Madam Chairman. Oh, did you, any of us have um, questions for our staff? Yeah, th I was confused as to what the plan was. I saw a lot of stuff going back and forth. Do we have a definitive drawing that shows what this is? I, one failing here, and I was going to try to get into my email. I don't okay. have that. I, I, mean, I, I mean, literally, it's hard to approve or, or disapprove of something with all these emails that went through before and after the agenda. So do you have that copy with you? Okay, can we, if uh, I'm asking the applicant the viewer and then to come yeah. forward, if you can put that on the, on the uh, display. The, the just the, that, yes. And then um, yeah. and you may have to bend the head down just a little bit to make it, that'll work. And if you don't mind, uh, so we can catch your comments, uh, move over to the podium to speak into the microphone. Not on our, so, on our uh, screens. Just slide over just a little bit more. You'll need to speak no. into the microphone. Thank you. After going back. Carlos, can you put, there you go, thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Can she turn it? No. And so what, what that's showing then is that the, at the top of the drawing is north, uh, right side's gonna be east, left side's west, and then the, the uh, roadway uh, is to the south off of the drawing. So it's just the portion of the backyard. And this is uh, consistent, I'll say for the record, with what you had sent previously. The only difference is uh, the, the last email I sent out, I think it was on Monday, was a color uh, portion of this. Karski, if you could uh, introduce, uh, provide your name and address for the record. My name is Alina Pekarski, and this property is located at 50 Moana Court South, Home Coast, Florida, 32137. Do you have anything that you want to add with the new drawings and just kind of re... So basically, association said that they would be open to this uh, particular placement which would only uh, require a two-foot um, variance. Um, and also they wanted less amount of pavers. So we took the pavers out from the side and the back. And in order to make better impervious, I, I'm always confused with that word yeah. coverage, yep. we're going to remove the actual concrete, which you guys approved when the house was built and we're gonna replace it with pavers. So that way there's more water penetration, I guess that's. So all of the, all of the concrete pad is gonna go away? Which, I mean, it doesn't have to, but I think it's gonna be better for the It looks coverage. better. Yeah, it looks better. It looks so, better. So what we see there, the hot tub spot concrete pad, that's gonna be pavers now, correct? No, under the pad is concrete. So that's yeah, concrete. I cannot sit okay, on but the that, pavers. All of this. But that pad already was closer to the backyard. You're cutting off part of that pad? Is yes, that we're going to cut off two foot of it. And then you're going to add two feet to the other side? Yes. That's what the association said would work for them. That way it sits further from the property line by two feet. So basically, essentially what's going to happen is we're going to add to the side and to the front and we're going to move it. So it's going to go a little bit to the side and a little bit towards the house. Now, I don't have last month's with me. I thought that the side setback was seven and a half feet. No, it's five. It's five. Okay. So it's going to be right at five feet on the side. Okay. Any more? No, I'm just kind of catching up here. Is this an after the fact? Yeah. Right, you weren't here last month. <clears throat> Anthony came to us with a, a, it was much closer to the backyard. Okay. We were, we were asking for a bigger variance and we were trying to figure out how to also add some aesthetics for the applicant um, as a continuance. She also had not been in touch with the HOA at that time. Um, they wanted, they were nervous of an easement. 
had a right to on the property. And now going through the, seeing the emails from uh, today, the association's okay with what we see here. Correct. I don't have a form, formal approval, but they, okay. I have an email from them stating that this is going to be acceptable. Yeah, and he emailed and, into that. And Anthony, we discussed last time, HOA approvals are not um, necessarily our purview, right. but it's good to know what they think. It's just as another input. Right, yeah. Just, yeah. I just ask you guys, the planning board, to approve if possible so we can move on with our lives and put this matter behind us and get it all fixed up. It would have been easier to get that permit in advance. So the salesperson, I mean, I know it sounds really stupid because I'm a real estate agent. I should know about this stuff. But literally, the salesperson over there told me it's a, it's a spa. You don't really need to get it approved. I mean. And we should be able to trust that, right? We should, yeah. But I should have known are better. You, than are that. you an agent or a broker? Broker. Okay. If there's no further questions or comments by the applicant, we can move to public comment. Public comment is open at this time in regard to application 3391. Okay. Um, no further public comment. Um, back to the board. Do we have anything additional for staff? Staff, do you have anything? Only item would be, and it does seem like we've come to an agreement, uh, if, if you do have a an approval on this, including your approval, the need to have the as-built uh, meeting the, the showing the eight foot provided to staff. Yeah, I, I, um, I will make the motion, but I think we also need to um, reiterate the tree ordinance needs to be followed. I know they showed it on here finally, but I would make a motion to approve the variance um, with this eight foot setback to the rear, um, contingent upon a. Um, as built to be turned into the county and um, the tree ordinance uh, to be complied with. I'll second Absolutely. That. We're going to put that, put the tree in there and we'll do the as built survey if you need it, no problem. Okay, so a motion made by Mr. Langello, seconded, and it was second? I second it. All those ready to vote in favor, say aye. 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 All those not say nay. The ayes have it. Four to zero. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you and sorry about the, all the emails. Back. <laughs> okay, next application um, is quasi-judicial. Anybody have any expert in communication to disclose? Carlos? that back on the screen, please. Uh, no expectations to disclose. Is staff ready to proceed with their presentation? Yeah, we are. Uh, this is a, a project number 2023-090011. A bit of a mouthful there. This is a variance um, at 10 Dawson Drive to reduce the 25-foot front minimum set back in the R1 district uh, down to zero. This is, uh, purpose of this was a carport. Carport has been installed, so this is an after the fact variance request. Uh, here's the aerial of the property uh, showing the, the existing home, uh, and then the, the carports in, in front of that to the, to the east, to the front. Uh, we had reviewed this at TRC. The applicants uh, satisfactorily addressed our, our comments, providing uh, the, the narrative of the purpose of the carport was to protect vehicles, uh, boats, those kind of things that you have. And you can see from the aerial, it's a heavily treed lot. And so that's part of what the, the applicant was seeking there. And that uh, also the applicant has provided that there's really no other location because of the septic uh, being on the property, no other opportunity for them to be able to provide that protection on their lot other than in its present location. Uh, we did make note of the of the 25 foot reducing down that front set back down to zero. That's pretty extreme for us, but you know, also realizing that there's, there's not a lot of room in the front with the home existing as it was. Uh, typically, your setbacks are involved uh, for future widening, uh, some consideration like that. And the Dawson's not going to be widened, maybe 
improved in the future, uh, but would not be subject to any, any widening because of it being a residential street. So I wanted to leave all those uh, facts for you and think we covered it pretty well in our technical staff report, uh, but have those three options available for the board. Approval after a finding that all the variance criteria have been met or denial, finding that the one or more of the criteria have not been met, and then continuance uh, for either us or the applicant to be able to provide additional information back to the, to the board. With that, I'll close waiting questions or comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Adam. Do any board members have any questions or comments for staff? Uh, Adam, I just have one question. So yes, ma'am. Going back to the visual, we're talking it, you turn into the carport. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, we don't have any questions from the board. Is the applicant here? And would they like to? Okay. Come up, please. Do have any photos of this, do we? I've got um, the plan coming up here in just a moment as soon as I get done scrolling. Hi. State your name and your address in the microphone. Robert Robertson, 10 Dawson Drive. Tell us a little bit about your property. So basically, um, we're, we're in the unincorporated Palm Coast, so we're on a dirt road. So I made the mistake of getting the carport thinking I didn't need a permit for it. So basically, we constructed it um, according to the length of the driveway. So you can see I can't go closer to the house with it. So we went to the end of the driveway um before i realized there was a 25 foot setback so basically i spent six thousand on this carport so i'm in the doghouse with my wife now um so basically i measured in between the driveway and the road i have 25 feet from the end of my property line to the edge of the road so basically you could park two fire trucks in front of my driveway and the road still wouldn't be blocked side by side um, also the fire hydrants on the other side of the road it's 80 feet um, from the property line. Also, uh, the electrical pole is, uh, electrical pole is 34 feet from the variance uh, line. Septic tank is 17 feet. And the um, water utility is 20 feet from, from the variance area. Members, do you have any questions for the applicant? Do you? I do. Can you believe it? <laughs> Can you tell me how far away your, your carport is from your house? I wish we had some pictures of this. Um, yes, it is. It's 10 feet from the house right now. 10 feet. 10 feet. Adam, do we know? Do we have that information? Let me, let me ask. Uh, so that if I'm seeing this dimension right here, it's 31. Is that correct? So the, the 31... It, 13.1. Not this dimension. That can't can't be 13, I don't think. I think it's 20. Oh, it 21. 21. 21. 21. So I got 20.9, 21. So that can't be 13. Uh, this is 13.1 on this dimension. This is a covered entry. Yeah, um, so basically on the on the south side of the carport, it's it's about six inches from the house. Okay. On the uh, what is the material that you built the carport out of? It's a versa tube. Uh, VersaTube, uh, it's, uh, I believe it's stainless. stainless what is the steel. roof structure? Of the that? roof is sheet metal. Underneath? Uh, so there's nothing underneath. It, well, it's got gables. It's got stainless gables, and then it's just sheet there's metal. No, there's not a wooden frame to this thing? No wood at all. Well, I, honestly, I wish I could see this, Adam. Um, we have a structure built extremely close to a house. I don't know if our fire code has looked at this situation or not. We looked at it in regards to that. I think from being described, it's not combustible. So it's not that right? combustible. Right, but yeah. we don't have any information to that effect. Understood. I have the uh, spec sheet right here for the cardboard. It's one of those. One of those. Yeah, versa tube. So basically, it comes with no instructions. You just put it together like you think it goes, basically. Um, but yeah, it's all stainless. And actually, the fire. Fire said fire rescue has no issue with the variance, basically. What's, a, what's across the street uh, from the property? Across the street, they're building a home right now. So from my property line to their house is 110 feet. So 
know, that that's the closest property to the carport would be 110 feet. All right, Adam. Say that you said I actually have a picture of it right here. You're talking about the home, right? Not the not the yeah, the actual from the edge of my driveway to the home across the street. That makes yeah, that well. Carlos, could put that on the screen. Can you center that in the picture? Yeah, would you pull that down just a little bit, please? More. more. A little bit more. Keep going. Keep going, man. So to the edge of their drive, to the beginning of their driveway, and from the end of yours. Yeah, so is it right there where the picture ends is the end of my driveway? If, they, if you can, I'm sorry, we're not picking this up. Uh, you're going to, if you can, just pull the, pull the camera. Yeah, that'll work all right. So That's all right. He's got it. In the picture, that's the edge of my driveway. They don't have a driveway yet. Right. So it's 100 feet to their garage. And I think, oh. I think actually their driveway is going to be on the front side. I think that's just going to be dirt or rock right there. Sure, though. It's oh, still that's under. not the front. That's not the entrance of their driveway. That's the rear, yeah. That's the rear of the house. But that's the garage. But that's the entrance. Where they'll drive it. That's the entrance to their garage, yeah. Sorry. Do you have any pictures of yours? Of the carport? Yeah. No, sir. Not printed out on my phone. I do. It's it's big. I mean, it's it's uh, 32 by 28, so it's it's a large carport. Can can you put the phone on the projector with the pictures? Uh, I take that back. I do not. Okay. Do you have any other questions for the applicant? Stand, stand by, Madam Chair, if you can. We've got, uh, we're going to try something here. <laughs> I'm trying to get you a picture. So we, I think we've got something. Question, Adam. The, uh, I guess the person across the street who's doing a build, they were, notified of this they were he loves it he wants one <laughs> uh, I agreed to help him build it by not showing up <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. that's funny okay and so it goes into it's secured into um, the ground just with the gables so on the on the um, south side it's it's concreted in with uh, anchoring bolts on the north side, it's got helical anchors that go into the earth. So this design is actually compatible with both. So I'm, I'm going to tell you my point of view. I know that you probably did not understand you had to get a permit. And um, these are lots of record, which are small. But the problem is, is that th there's nothing at all unique about the property. And, um, and I use even one up here trying to find something unique as my fellow board members know. And just giving you the variance, you know, just giving people variances because they did something they weren't supposed to do says, why doesn't everybody just do that? That's my old issue is that, you know, what is the, the circumstance here? You're talking about the trees. That's why people move out there in that area. Right. Proximity to the beach and that hammock, that old hammock out there. And, um, and it's just so darn close to the street. It really is. Yeah, I hear you. I looked at going to the right, but the electrical line is too low, so I can't go to the right and back with it. Well, electrical lines could be buried. You know, you could do your whole electrical line under the house. Under the, they can just bury it. It's like FPL charges a, a flat amount of X amount of dollars, and you can have, which is better anyway for a hurricane, but that electrical line would be under the ground and be gone. If Plan that B. was your only contingency, that's, that could be overcome. Plan B. Plan B. So the, uh, looking at this picture, uh, your, your truck there, um, in mail, I guess the mailbox is on your property, it's not on the street, right? And then your... 
the the truck the, in front of your truck would it be on the street in that situation i'm just curious so from the the driveway is the end of the property line so it's 25 feet from the concrete to the street so there's a easement of 25 feet in between my property line and the street the edge of the street so my mailbox is not on my property this thing is 20 feet large it's 20 uh, it's um it's 28 wide 32 long so there's a 25 foot easement from the driveway to the street no sir not 25 feet in, in. He even on, if he's 28 feet he's outside of his property line or am i wrong so your truck in this photo is partially in the road uh no ma'am it's on the easement By the way. so not on my property but not on the road got it so he's in the easement I'm still on my property, but basically the, with the 25 foot setback, the carport has to start 25 feet into the driveway. I think, I think if we replace the word easement with right away, we're in good shape. Yeah, right he's in the I'm right sorry. Away. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Not, I, we don't even have the authority to grant him permission to be in the right of way yet. No, no. And, no, and no, I, no, just his truck right. is in this right. photo. Right. We were trying to gauge distance, so just his truck in this photo is in the right of way. Nothing structurally with his properties in the right of way. That's right. We don't have an accurate survey. Well, we have, if, if um, Carlos, you could toggle back to the screen. We've got an, an accurate survey, but then with the hand-drawn carport added in. And, yeah. uh, and I think that if, if I'm looking at it right, the width is 33, the depth is 28. Is that right on the carport? Um, opposite. So the, the width is 28 and the length is 32. I, I guess I, I got a little bit. Of, I guess I got a little bit of a problem because what you just showed us on the or what we had on the photo doesn't match what you're showing there because right. this would show the left hand side being using the augers in the earth, and then the it actually looks like both sides would end up. You don't have any of the base of this in concrete. So the the south side is on concrete and the north side is on the dirt. So the, the, what you've shown is the carport is not correct on this. Is that right? No, that's correct. Then the survey is not correct because the concrete's not shown correctly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So we, maybe we got more concrete than what we thought we did. Correct. Yeah, I think there is a sticky wicket here. I think, we, first of all, we need accurate information. The drawing on this picture is not sufficing, especially the numbers you're telling us. Don't jive, and um, there may be, like I said, a way for him to put it on the side anyway. But I, I you know, at the very least, I mean, I'm more on how my fellow board members feel. But I hate to keep putting these off to continuance, but continuance with a survey and and options because I, again, there's the justification of this is that um, thought that he couldn't put it there because of FPL wires, and he just went ahead and put it up. So what do you tell all the other people who come up, want to get that and come up to you and ask for one? Well, there's also a very large oak right there as well. So I would have to chop the tree down, which I'm not. So there is a that. certain amount of trees you can't take down. I'd rather not. I'd tear the carport down before I tear the tree down. Let me ask you a question. The south side of your carport, does your, is your driveway drawn right? It's got to be drawn right on this. I, I don't think it was. Um, it's not drawn right because the concrete comes out to the edge of the carport. So, how far on, on the north side of your driveway? How far does the carports extend over the concrete? On the north side, um, I would say about a foot. Oh, okay. So there's so there's more concrete. <clears throat> that sounds of your right. Entryway than what's showing yes. over here. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. I, I think we should hear from the public, but then my own gut would be to ask for a continuance with accurate information and options. There's nothing more that you'd like to say? That's it. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you for coming up. We'll open up to public comment. Would anybody like to publicly comment on this application? Seeing as none, I will bring it back to the board. Do you have any other comments? Questions for staff? I mean, what I'm looking at here, I think it makes more sense to, to move it move it further further north and back. That would be my 
my thought process on to get it off the road. But I'm with Mr. Langello. I just don't have enough information here to, in pictures, the picture that we were shown is kind of, it just doesn't really give me enough to make a definitive decision on, on this application. Madam Chair, we've, we've got another photo if Carlos can toggle back to the, <clears throat> this one's a little better. Uh, Did you, could you out, nod any affirmative? Is the roof structure actually attached now? Okay, thank you. It, he said it was not. Well, this picture definitely helps. And that's the tree that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Unless another, I don't know if anybody else has any comments. I, I, I just have a comment. I mean, um, I'd be inclined to. Uh, approve it um, the neighbor doesn't seem to care his house faces the other direction I know we don't want people just building um, into the setbacks for no reason but no HOA there it's on a corporated area uh, the neighbors aren't nobody's here complaining that'd be my take on it I have one more question for the applicant what's wrong with the garage You'd have to come up here to respond. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, the garage is just full of stuff, and I have nine vehicles registered in this county. I'm a small business owner. They're, they're not all parked there, but there's normally about five vehicles there. Because you're a hoarder, you want me to give you a variance. <laughs> no, I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> I just I have a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if nobody has any other comments, I, I again, would, I would like to um, continue this item to, um, I guess, I guess maybe, I don't know if one month is going to give him time to get a survey, but um, Adam, should I say date certain or just leave it open because I know how hard it is to get surveys with the holiday season, but I, I think two things. One, we need to actually see what we're approving, the location, because I don't, honestly, I, the, the drawing that's there doesn't seem to jive with the math that he's describing, and two, that there may be other options for this on the, on the property. You know, dismantling this superstructure is not the end of the world. Um, he already has a car concrete driveway that's there. So I'm only talking about just maybe perhaps putting this in another place that might work. And uh, options are better. And, um, you know, as the chair talked about, there is even a, um, a relief on the property. He has a, he has a garage. This thing was no further than the front of the house. It looks like that side comes out. There would still be some parking. It's, it looks like a lot of options here, that the option taken that may not necessarily be the best one related to setbacks. And uh, so that would be my motion to, to continue it to, do you think date certain or just continue it? Date certain would preserve notice. And if, if anything, we could um, report progress at the next meeting. and. And, um, and continue it again if we need to. We cannot continue beyond two, two uh, additional meetings. And so just for everyone's benefit. The applicant come forward? Get I'm going to give you exercise today going back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I'm asking you to do, and that we'll see if the, the rest of the board agree, is that you get this surveyed and determine where this stuff is and look at other options where this could be officially. Like I said, the electrical wire you'll find is not a big deal to to bury that, um, but you have to hire a professional uh, surveyor to do this. And um, to do that, I'm not sure you can get it done unless you get on it right away and you know somebody within one month. We could, we could date certain it for two months, which would take you into next year, if that doesn't bother you. Um, honestly, I'd rather just tear it down because I'm not gonna chop that tree down. You know, burying the FPL line is one thing, but then I have to remove the tree and. It's kind of the whole reason I'm there. Well, there's, you have other options too. You could make it not so big so it doesn't stick out as far. I you can't can return it, it, so. Are you able to, because like, so basically we have you have a six car carport. Are you able to do less in length? Um, I could, um, but I have, it's, it's about the boat as well. My boat's 24 foot long. Okay. So I really wanted to be able to cover the boat. So 
if I were to shorten it, I'd probably just tear it down as well, honestly. So, and, and, and to the right, there's also the water utility. Um, so, and to the left is the septic. So, and then that would bring it even further forward. So. Well, again, I, I don't even see how we can approve it without accurate information as to where it is and how we're to do it. And that means he would need to get a survey. Um, and if he's unwilling to do that, I mean, that's your option. If you're unwilling to pay to get a survey to locate it and do all that, then, um, then I would retract my motion and just uh, motion to deny. Understood. If we have any consensus. So do you want to continue and get a survey to help us out? I can get a survey. That'll tell us, too, what other options that you may have to help you out. Okay. I don't think he has much many other options. I'm just judging by him. I'm, I'm looking at this now. I mean, it's pretty much make that's you know the location what that makes sense. But you just have to see the um, the survey to get a better idea. Additional photos would yeah would some be good helpful. photos and um, maybe some uh, you know if, there, if there's if there's photos of the I have a pretty good idea what it's going to finish. But it'd be nice to see in a uh, good. Um, you know, even if you have pictures of a finished product from the manufacturer or something would help. Um, but the survey is the most important part. Madam Chair, if I could offer one, one item. Uh, the survey would be needed as an as-built. And so one way or the other, you'd end up doing it because as part of the permit, you'd end up, maybe you wouldn't be out money. That would assume that uh, you ultimately get the variance, you're permitted, everything's good. You know, you're, you're, you need to do an as-built anyway, as-built survey, so it may not be useless spending, so. Okay. Okay, then I'll, I'll keep my motion for him to bring, a, bring us a, or we'll, we'll continue it. Two months give you a chance to get the thing done, so come back in January? Yes, sir. Okay, we continue it to date certain in um, January meeting and um, he would bring a survey back and some more photographs and possibly other options if the board does not think that it fits where it is. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Langello. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing no, seeing no further discussion, are we ready to vote? All of those in favor say, for the continuance, say aye. 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 As opposed to saying no. I think we've all agreed. Moving forward to number six, quasi judicial requiring disclosure, project 202 Does anyone have? No, ma'am. Staff, are you ready for your presentation? Yes, ma'am. This is project number 2023-09-0063 at 24 Via Roma. Uh, this request is for an 8.4 foot front or east yard setback variance from the required minimum 25, uh, I got front in there again, from the required minimum on the side. I don't know what it is now. I'll have to see it in the rest of the text. Um, here's the, the, the lot. It is irregular. It's, it's here at the end of this line of lots. You can see across the street that those are more square in, and uh, or rectangular in their format. And so this one already had that challenge from the beginning of having uh, this irregular side with it. Let me go to the plan. Bear with me. Five. Guess not. And so here's what you see as, as far as the uh, it is the front, and so we've we've got the um, a regular uh, side here that they had to deal with, and what had been what had happened was the surveyor had measured off of the edge of pavement and not the lot line when they did their submittal to us, and so what was what was demonstrated to us was that it would meet a 25 foot front set front setback. We had missed that in our review. Uh, there are some developments here that are older in hammock dunes that do measure from edge of pavement. 
and so part of it is on on staff. Uh, we realized this at the time of the final survey being sent to us that it did not meet that 25 foot uh, front setback. That in fact that had been measured from the pavement edge, uh, and instead of being measured from the front property line. Uh, the house is complete. Uh, it has been given a temporary CO. Uh, I'll admit that for the record that we uh, allowed the family to move in awaiting the, the variance. Uh, and, and so the options available now for the contractor are, are not real good uh, because they did work under an approved permit uh, approved by, by staff uh, in, in error uh, and, that, uh, and that they did have a fairly unique situation here where it, it was a initial error by, the, by the, the surveyor who came back and said this is how it should be and then and was missed by us. And, um, and so we're, we're bringing forward then those options for the board um, approval, finding the variance criteria have been met, that it is a unique situation because of the lot mainly, but also then because of, of the compounding of the errors that had happened with the front setback. Uh, the denial based on the criteria uh, not being met, and those would, would be that you know, this isn't an extraordinary situation, whatever the case may be, um, definitely was not an act of the owner. Uh, or, or I'd say, in this case, the contractor, it, it, both of them had acted all, all times in good faith. And then the final option would be a continuance uh, for, uh, hopefully to a time and date certain, for additional information from us or from, uh, from the applicant. With that, I'll close, wait, any questions or comments? Thank you. Board members, do we have any questions or comments for staff? Is the applicant present this evening? Hi. State your name and your address into the microphone, please. Uh, Don Cabral, the general contractor, DC Construction, for 24 Via Roma. So yeah, as was mentioned, it, it is a uh, much smaller lot than normal, 17,000 square feet, compared to, I think, over 20,000. We did, when it was laid out and was approved, we built off that permitted set of plans. Sure. Um, I know as a contractor, you don't vary from those. And so having those, those permitted and stamped, we went with that. Right now, it would be a real hardship if, if we were to try and even come up with an option as to what we could do to gain that extra uh, footage. We'd have to lop off the single car garage on the left and probably the two-car garage would lose 10 feet. Uh, at this time, the HOA has told us they do not have any issues with the way it sits on the property. And because we do not have any uh, a, a buildable property to the left, uh, if you were to start lining things up, it, you know, it may look out of balance then, but now it doesn't. Uh, it, it fits well within the community. Uh, so we're, we're hoping that uh, because of the hardship and the, the, the odd size of the lot, that uh, that variance would be granted. Questions for um, So I run, I'm, I'm very familiar with the lot and it's, um, it's definitely an odd shaped lot. And ironically, I drove by this house maybe about a week or so ago. Um, not knowing that this application was coming. It looks, it looks great. Um, didn't notice that it was closer to the road by eye, by driving by. Um, so that's just my, my personal comment on it that, that, uh, that I have. Um, just ironically, this application came up, so. Uh, we have something, Adam, from the HOA that states that they're in agreement with this? My assistant, she may. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just identify yourself by your name and your address and your title. Valerie Tellickson, um, I work for Don for 24 Via Rome. Um, from the HOA, we do not have anything in writing except for an email um, stating that they really don't have any issues that we need to just take it up with Flagler County. So that's. So are they not making you do go through their normal? Okay. Okay. I have an email. It doesn't say like 
It doesn't say anything other than just by the county. So. Okay. If you, I'm sure you guys have staff's email. If you would forward that to staff, that'd be awesome. Mr. Thank Landau, could, uh, Carlos, could you put that that overall picture back up of the uh, the lot and the neighborhood? Oh, is mean, that you, Adam? Yeah, that's Adam. me. Let's get there. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, Anthony. Just by looking at it, it's definitely an irregular shaped lot, and um, the road the road curves just past that. So it's not even a sight line thing, and that's not a buildable lot right next to it. Um, I mean, criteria one would definitely be met here, and uh, no fault of their own. Um, I, it doesn't seem to be in, 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 you know, impeding the neighborhood at all. It's, it's not you know, an everyday situation. So if there's nothing to the south of that. Build it. Was that like an, a, a conservation easement or something? Yeah, it's a, it's a green space. I think it's listed as a reserve parcel on the plat, and uh, there there won't be anything there. Okay. Any other questions or comments for the applicant? Thank you. To public comment, is there anyone who would like to comment on this application? And I bring it back to the board. Do we have anything further for staff? Public comment? Did you call? You did they, it. They all showed up and then left real quick. It was a big crowd, but they all left. Just a riot, really. Uh, Madam Chairman, I think due to all the circumstances that uh, Adam mentioned about the county overlooking it and uh, of the lot and not going to create a problem for anybody else. I'll make a motion to approve the variance. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, say nay. Aye. Carried. And to application item number seven, project number 2023090048. This is a quasi-judicial requiring disclosure of ex parte communication. Board members, anything to close? Awesome. Finish with that. Is staff ready to proceed with their presentation? Yes, ma'am. It's the uh, agenda item number seven on our agenda. Thank you, Madam Chair, for reading that project number so I don't have to. Here's the approximate location. Uh, this is one of uh, three of uh, the newer uh, site development plan and development agreements we have. This one's for Brookside at Ormond Station. And so uh, this one I'll cut right to the drawing on this. And so we have a review of the, uh, of the dimensional requirements in the packet. See, that's going to be pretty far down. That, uh, here we go. And I'll need to rotate it. The well, site development plan consists of about, was it half a dozen pages? A little bit more than that, about 10 pages. And so we've got a uh, second page there showing the wetland impacts uh, that are occurring within this, remembering uh, that uh, the development uh, within uh, Hunter's Ridge uh, does have the uh, wetland credits that are part of the conservation uh, uh, assessment, that the, the conservation lands that were given to the county. And so still, um, arguably, there's an attempt to reduce those impacts and, and I, I think that each one of these we see shows that that the larger wetland areas are still outside of the development footprint uh, this shows the uh, lot layout I think this had the layout then for each of the three different lot types is what you're seeing here and so there are uh, three separate uh, uh, lots lot types based on lot width Then you have the kind of a specific layout uh, that follows um, with the layout showing a, pot a potential building footprint on each of those. And so that's on the remaining sheets. And then we should have within this also then uh, the model sheet, I think is what we had, the utility layout on page nine, and then 10 being your uh, per perspective model with being used as a temporary sales center. So we want to make sure we have that in each of these site plans now that you have that uh, uh, from, the, from the onset. With that, I'm going to go back to the dimensional requirements from the agreement. 
we're trying to get some continuity here also with these so that um, uh, these can be fairly standardized. But they will differ depending on lot width, the number of lots. Uh, those are all in play here with this. And so uh, this one's going to have the 4,800 square foot minimum lot size, 40 foot uh, lot width as measured at the front setback. So that takes care of your pie-shaped lots, your ones that are irregular that don't have parallel side lot lines. Uh, street uh, side yard setback uh, for the 40 foot is 11, 12 and a half for 50, 60 foot are at 14 feet. And then you've got 65% impervious lot coverage that's going on here with this. Uh, one thing to note, uh, kind of as a precursor for the other agreements that we have showing up, the amendments to uh, Grove side and Garden side, uh, the, the lot coverage that snuck in with those as we had done those back in 2017 and 2018, uh, consistent with our R1D zoning as we were using that as the model at the time. Lot coverage uh, isn't something that we've seen more often within uh, the recent uh, iterations within Hunter's Ridge. And so lot coverage typically within our conventional zoning being limited to the area under roof. Uh, the, these agreements in Hunter's Ridge within uh, the Ormond Station portion have omitted that and in, in, instead relied only on the impervious coverage. And, and the board uh, planning, planning board previously has recommended approval. Board of County Commissioners has approved those. And so you won't see lot coverage here in this or the uh, remaining uh, other two items that are the new site development plans that we have coming forward. With that, uh, I'll close and await the questions or comments from the board, but offering those three options that we have approval of the PUD site development plan and development agreement for Brookside at Ormond Station or denial. Uh, if you can provide some uh, recommendation or some reasoning for the denial or recommendation for denial to the Board of County Commissioners, should you uh, deny this, uh, make that recommendation for denial or continuance to a time and date certain. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Adam. Board members, do you have any questions or comments for staff at this time? Again, would the is the applicant present? Good evening. I'm Kimberly Buck with the Allen Engineering Group, representing the applicant. I'm really just here to answer any questions that you might have. Angelo. Yeah, amazing, huh? I got a, several questions for you, Kim. Sure. Adam, could you go back to the last page you just had with the setbacks? I was very excited to, to show you this one. Uh, well, I have. <laughs> I'll, I'll, the the other thing I left out of my presentation, I thought Ms. Buck was going to say it, and certainly uh, the representative of the developer would be rem he'd be mad at me if I didn't say it. Talking about the amenity? The amenity. Oh, doggone it. Okay. All right. You stole my thunder. All right. I'll go to the, the other page. <laughs> I'm going to go to that first, and then I'll go. I'll go back. All right. I was really excited about the amenity. I just wanted thing. to I understand left that the setback. You have a 40-foot lot. And 11 foot side setbacks. So 11 and 11 is 22 feet from a 40 foot lot, giving you an 18 foot wide building area. Have, um, okay, so the 40 feet or the, the 40 foot lot is an 11 foot side street. Side what? Side street. So the corner lots are wider. So we have to add. Um, that extra six feet on a 40 foot lot on the corner so that basically what we what we have is 30 foot buildable envelope width on our 40 foot lots okay can we go back to that picture then so this is where i it was lot 97 i looked at does you have a close-up of some of the ones that have the buildable area get there can you see that <clears throat> Let me go to 97. You're probably intimately right familiar with lot 97, right? I think it's right there on the corner. It is. Right there on it the is. corner. Yeah. So see how it... Um... So lot 97 looks smaller. And as I went down, lot 101, 102, 103, these are wider lots. You know, we just heard people come in here. The real world is people get on the lot, and they're not going to look at this plan. They're going to be coming back to us and asking us for variances because there's not enough room to do something. My question is, is why is that corner lot so small? And you have several of the lots that you could have pushed those over and got the corner lot bigger to allow that larger setback and then give them more room to build on. 
Is there, am I missing oh, something? It's just, so we're, we, we were tasked with doing a mix of 40s, 50s, and 60s. And um, the way the configuration worked on this, um, the, you know, we had a series of 40 foot lots in a row. The 40 foot lot ended up on that corner. The buildable envelope for that is still 30 feet, doesn't change. It's just that you have that extra width on the side to accommodate the street, the street side. What I'm asking, Kim, is it, is it a problem? If we if, could flip it? Well, if, you, like, move, like if you slide those over a little bit and give that a little bit more room, only the reason I'm looking, I'm just looking for the, you know, maybe a future board or some of the younger members on this board to hear this very item come in because somebody in a lot like this comes in and they say, gee, there wasn't enough room. There just wasn't enough room and I needed a carport or I needed some other item and I just don't have it. But, the, but Mark, the, that lot isn't any smaller than the 40 foot lot right next to it. The, that buildable area is not smaller than one next to it? That's what Correct. Saying, yeah. It looks smaller, that's what I was questioning. It is not. Still built it's 30 still 30 feet, feet wide because you've got um, let's see, you have Yeah, there was no dimension on there. I'm looking at it visually, it looks smaller. Yeah, visually it does look smaller. I, I but it is agree not. with you 100%, but no, it's not. The buildable envelope is still 30 feet. Okay. Yeah, Kim, you said it was, uh, I, I pulled the table away, but it's 11 feet on the street side, right on the 40s. Yes. So that makes sense, 11 and 5, you're losing 16. And you can see that bottom dimension, 47.31, so you're still over, 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 um, over over the 30 Correct. and then and then the one right next to it at 98 40 feet wide five and five you're left at 30 so you're you're actually you're actually bigger there on on 97 at least at the rear you're losing a little bit at the corner i think that's why the you know the the, the need for her to design it is I to make i tried to do it on here oh yeah i understand I had a hard time <laughs> so i'm just looking at it visually and i was scrolling through this i look at that corner a lot Especially after just looking at variances all before it, I'm thinking this is another variance lot. Okay, and then the other thing, could you describe your um, your amenities that Adam was? I took his thunder away. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, you'll have to go back to that because I don't remember what the amenities are. I know we have a pool and a clubhouse, um, and parking, um, and I think there's like a little tot lot there. Um, but right now, the way that it's designed is that we're just designing the parking lot and the amenity is going to come in as a separate site plan um, once the builder settles on the configuration. This is a typical amenity plan that they want to put here, but it's not really final designed. But it will have, like I said, it will have, you know, clubhouse, pool, cabana, um, um, whatever, like a, you know, <coughs> benches and um, little <coughs> playground area for children. And and at if there's a hundred lots at lot thirty, the net lot that that amenity then would be built. Got it. And is there a is there a way that that's triggered back to the county? Other than other than through the PUD uh, and. and suppose the board could have a completion bond for it at the time of final plat approval. We haven't talked about that, but those are the, those would be the two two ways enforceable through the PUD through the zoning, uh, or you know even even more so having a having a, a bond of some kind, some amount being put up. Thanks, Kim. Please then. We'll open up to public record, or public record, public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this particular application? Seeing none, board members, any further questions for staff? Further, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. We approve this project. I'll second it. Second, vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carry, the ayes win. Moving on to item eight, 
Project 202-309-0053, quasi-judicial requiring disclosure of ex parte communication. Board members, item number 15. Adam, are you ready for your presentation? Yes, ma'am, I'll get there in a minute, I'm sure. Now I get to feel what it feels like to be a planning board member going through a 600-page agenda using an iPad, right? Yeah. On the weekend. On a weekend, yes, yeah. Two parts. In two parts. Am I close? Are we able to, when it comes, Adam, when it comes to certain things like the fact that they didn't have the full, you know, like the amenities area and some of the common areas truly planned out, that's something that's going to come back in front of us? It, it will. It, it will come back as its own, its own PUD thing. site development plan submittal uh, when they get closer to, to finalizing that. Gotcha. I think I'm seeing that this is the beginning of part two, and it is. The ridge side is application 20, uh, project number 2023-09-0053. Make sure I've got the right one. And that is number eight. And so this is sitting on 61.36 acres. And this one's going to be geographically, and hopefully I've got this in the right orientation. It's up uh, east of the power line in that kind of northeast corner. And so a little, little different from us, uh, uh, from uh, you had Groveside before, a former Celadine that's there. And so this is, when you, when you see uh, the county line is, is along that east boundary of this, of this development. And so this is in an area where, where before we had kind of been along Airport Road. We were moving along kind of east to west there. This is now up, moving further, further north into, uh, into the areas uh, uh, closer to the county line. So, uh, and then here's the roundabout to give you some orientation there. I'm going to go to the, the plan itself again, and then I'll come back to the uh, development uh, dimensional requirements. By the way, Adam, do you guys read those surveys? That the last one had like 25 pages of boundary survey. Did you guys? Do you guys actually read that and close that? Those surveys? No, unfortunately. Sometimes we do. Uh, this one. I don't know if we ran, we have a, a bit of software we can run to make sure it closes. Uh, it's, it's um, I don't know if we do it with regularity, we try to. I mean, I know there's a, there's probably um, title people that do all that too. I just look at that and I'm saying, I feel sorry for what we're trying to do all those numbers. We, we, we've done it before and we've also done it where several times we've had to retype legal descriptions. So that's, uh, we, don't, we don't like doing that, but we've done it before. So this one's got eight pages total to the site plan, and this one, as it says on the cover, is a is a uh, attached development. This is duplexes in this one, and so what you have uh, here along with this is an, a road extension that's happening as part of a part of the development, and so that in order to to get to Ridgeside, uh, you're you're going to have that that extension from Airport Road that's coming uh, from uh, from the south to the north, and then you have the the layout that's here, and so with this one. The north is to your right, and then you have the, the duplex lots laid out around the, the circle, and then you'll have a stub out for uh, the next development then to come to the to the west side. So this includes that, that road of roundabout at its far uh, north end, and then you see the, the, the layout uh, with the, the site plan uh, shown on, on pages three, I think it is, right? Of the, uh, of the site plan. Lift stations here, so you've taken care of that uh, in its location where you'd expect it to be along the south. And then uh, sidewalks like we have seen them before. I didn't mention those previously, but you have the sidewalks on one side uh, that's serving then as, as that uh, uh, pedestrian amenity that's included within the, the uh, PUDs traditionally now. And then that off that offshoot, a continuation up until you come to the temporary, uh, the end here with that temporary cul-de-sac that will eventually extend on further to the north for, for uh, yet uh, other uh, portions of the development so that you do have remaining lots. Uh, so that between these two pages, three and four, you have the entirety of the development shown here. Uh, let me go back to my dimensional requirements.
And so this one, uh, again, duplex development, so it's got 5,000 square foot lot size, uh, 40 foot uh, setbacks, um, five feet with zero at the common duplex wall, uh, 10 foot on your, on your side yard street setback, and then 70% lot coverage here, minimum, lot area, uh, minimum living area, I think the same, 1250. With that, uh, we didn't have an, did not have an amenity area here with this one. Uh, no? Yes? No? Oh, can we go back? Was that the stub out at the north? Why am I not seeing? Previous page, right here. That one, just not shown here. Okay, got it. I'm not really part of this. Okay, I didn't miss it. All right, good. So yet to come, and um, I guess with that, I'll close. Wait, any questions, or comments from the board? Do have those three options again, as we stated previously. Approval. Uh, recommendation for approval to the Board of County Commissioners, recommendation for denial or continuance. We did uh, provide public notice. Uh, I think within the notice we sent out for December, a uh, Board of County Commissioners date, assuming that you would provide a recommendation either for approval or denial with this continuance, we'll delay that. But uh, with that, I'll wait any questions or comments. And Ms. Buck again can make a, uh, a clarify anything I've gotten wrong here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Board members, do you have any questions or comments for staff? Would the applicant like to come up at this time and present? Kimberly Buck, Allen Engineering Group. Again, here to answer any questions. Um, just for clarification, there's a large area off of that um, stubbed out road that is a set aside for uh, future amenities. Anticipating passive recreation in their walking paths, um, benches, cabanas, something like that. Do these duplexes have garages? Yes. Is the plan for these duplexes to be single story or? Yes, single story. Kim, that, that amenity area is heading towards the, uh, it's not under the FPL lines though is it backs up to it okay for the applicant okay at this time we'll open it up to public comment if, there, if there's anyone who would like to come up please do still carlos we've got a graphic here it looks like it may be too big to show in one piece we may have to move it around a bit that microphone to your right is a uh, uh, the the one that's on the stand is a wireless. You can turn it on if you if you. It's now to your left. That one right, the black right there, right, right next the to the white. camera. Yes. Yep. Right there. Okay, yes. Oh, okay. You just uh, it, you pull it off and then you'll need to. There's a power button on the bottom. You just push it over and it'll turn red. And not yet. Just pretend you're on karaoke night. <laughs> That might be a good idea. Maybe put it, turn it, put it on the floor. Yeah, put it on the floor. Try that. That's hey. not bad. <laughs> you can identify your yourself with your name and your address, and you have three minutes. You can't zoom from there, right? No. <laughs> and you, you can, if if you're more comfortable, you can. Uh, we we. I was just uh, yes. Thank you. You can figure out what I was saying better than I could say it. Right. I'm Leslie Wright. This is my husband, Charlie. We live at 2461 Lipizzan Trail in Ormond Beach. I bought 10 acres there in 2004. A couple years later, Hunters Ridge started the development of Cypress Place off Airport Road. Pergola, Play, or Pergola Place is on our property's southern border. So if you see uh, Cypress Place down at the bottom of the picture. One of the first things Hunters Ridge did was to fill in a ditch that carried water west to east to the Little Tomoka River for hundreds of years. 
The ditch carried water from the exact same land you're talking about building Ridgeside on. The water from that property would flow to the east into a ditch that borders uh, the western edge of our property is on Lipizan Trail. The problem today is that that ditch doesn't exist anymore. As a result, through most of the year, there's standing water behind the homes on Pergola Place, and Hunters Ridge knows about that issue. I have personally spoken to residents there. We're unable to use the southern third of our property and other parts of our property flood, and our neighbors to the north, who I'm sure you're gonna hear from here in a minute, uh, also flood because there's nowhere for the water to go, and Libazon Trail floods. I spent a large part of the last 20 years talking with the city of Ormond Beach about this. I've hired attorney Dennis Baer. I've tried to deal directly with KB Homes, Hunters Ridge, and their engineer, Mark Doust. I've spoken out at Ormond planning meetings. I've even had the mayor walk the ditch with me on Father's Day seven years ago. <laughs> he agreed it was a mess. The water backup is disgusting, and yet nothing has been done about it. So our number one concern is the apparent disregard Hunters Ridge has for the water problem they caused and how they'll handle the water in these new developments. Where when will, where will that north-south ditch go? How will it be maintained? Will they put back in the west-to-east the west ditch that they took away almost 20 years ago? How will they maintain that ditch as well? Our second concern is privacy. We've invested a lot of money and time in having a very private piece of property. Along comes Riverside right on our western property line. You'll have 175 families living on the western edge of property that in Ormond Beach has maximum six families living on it. How much buffer will you leave? Will you be planting trees to maintain privacy and will you be building a fence? Our third concern is the traffic on Airport Road. Anybody who's ever driven on Airport Road, and especially in the last six months or a year, it's impossible. It's a safety hazard. There's already two schools there, and when they're dropping kids off or picking them up, you can barely get by. Uh, so this is only gonna add to that nightmare. It's obvious to me that over 20 years, Ormond Beach has no interest in, in controlling or enforcing any issues with Hunter's Ridge. They run free as evidenced by the ditch situation. We're asking Flagler County to do better, to stand up to your developers and hold them accountable. We're asking you to ensure that they do the right thing. We need them to stop flooding families who live on Lipizzan Trail. And we're asking that Hunters Ridge starts respecting the rural way of life that they want to build next to and not just flood us out. Yeah. Excuse me. My name is Steve Halliday. I'm uh, 2501 Lipizzan. I live next to Leslie. Very well spoken on the water issue. I'd like to bring more up on some of the traffic. <clears throat> Average homes have two vehicles. Just within their three developments, I don't know what the total number is, but going down that two lane on airport, whether going out to um, Timber Creek or going out um, to 40 is is gonna create even more of a mess. That doesn't even include Tattersall, which has not broke ground. There's um, uh, Avalon, which is over 2,000 homes. That's gonna be on 40. That's all within like a three mile radius. It's gonna be a total cluster for not just traffic, but emergency services, as I mentioned, schools, and of course, water. Now, I'm not opposed to building responsibly. Should match somewhat the area that we're in. We have a five acre lot. I'm not saying they do five acres, but build a nicer subdivision with a little more land in between. Those are all stack houses. I don't know if you've driven by most of these new developments, but there are no yards. You can barely get a, a rider, a riding tractor in between those. You can't plant a tree. So we're tearing down all this, uh, uh, the trees, the environment, you know, I, I like sitting on my porch every morning, my back porch, and looking at the deer. What's going to happen when these duplexes go in and some of these other subdivisions? It's going to impact uh, our way of living significantly. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Uh, 
Holly Tomplay. I live at 2515 in Raving Trail, and I'm also with them. <clears throat> the water is ridiculous. It has nowhere to go. I'm just want to thank them for coming out. Can you, right. That's okay. Can you just repeat our that? horses out there are on our five acres are standing in water because water has nowhere to go. So if they build over there, it's going to push that water more. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Good Hi. evening. My name is Charlie Wright. I live with Leslie Wright at 2461 Lipizan Trail. I understand that they're going to build a lot of houses in there. That's fine with me. But they'll put retention basins in with the water level will be high enough when, as soon as it rains hard, retention basins get filled up. When they fill up, then it starts flooding. And since there is no place for the water to go right now, it's when, it's, it's not the amount of water you have, it, it's the speed that the water gets to the retention basin. When you've got pavement and roofs and driveways, hard surfaces, that drain water quickly to a retention basin, then that, that complicates the problem right, right from the beginning. So rather than worried about the retention basins, they should be worried about relieving the water, cleaning ditches, and straightening them out prior to uh, permitting any further building. I think that should be part of it. Thank you. Is there any more public comment? Okay, seeing as none. Oh, okay. So my Hi. name is Elizabeth Fox. I live at 187 Carter Trail. I am gonna speak more on uh, the next one, but it's same builders. Um, I just wanna piggyback that this development is going to affect not only Lipizan, but I live off of Durrance Lane, and it will greatly affect the drainage on Durrance Lane that we already are completely underwater it's, but I'll speak more on that because the next one inter, inter connects that better. But I do want to say it's not just Lipizan that this one affects. Thank you. Um, would you like your rebuttal? Good evening. Uh, my name is Jake Barron. Yeah, I represent. Chairman, is that it for public comment? I believe so. Close public comment. And now you are able to rebut. Um, my name is Jake Barron. I represent Hunters Ridge and uh, U.S. Capital Alliance. Um, I did want to speak on some of the drainage that the residents were discussing. We purchased this property two years ago. And I do recognize that mistakes were made two decades ago. We're close to that. And I can't speak to the former developer or sub-developers as, you know, I understand that there was a sub-developer that did fill in that ditch. Um, part of our job is to fix ditches, is to make sure that water does run out of these people's yards into historic ditches. Part of our job was renewing jurisdictional wetland lines that we had with the state, opening up those ditches, allowing them to flow again. That's, that's part of our job as master planners. We're not here to just ram homes in and ruin people's lives. That's, that's not what we're here for. The same with amenities as we had, you know, we had four, we had those other four subdivisions come through and we had promised amenities were, were coming. It's just that as a master plan community, it's where do you put those? So if you have a grand entranceway to your development, we're gonna put it there. And we're gonna put another one on the east side instead of having each small amenity within each subdivision. Um, as far as specifics of drainage, our engineer can speak more to that. As far as Durrance Lane, I, I have seen the drainage issues there, both on the west side and on the east side. I've walked every one of those ditches. I'm generally not in a suit. Uh, it's usually just muck boots. And I, I do agree that there is water that's held back over there, and my engineer can speak to where that comes from. But, uh, Thank you all for your comments. 
and I, I am available, I can, I can give you a card. And if there's specific things that each one of you would like to point out to me, I'm happy to meet you at your property or on our property, and we can, we can discuss those issues. Thank you. I have, I have a question. Okay. Um, actually, I don't know, maybe Kim can answer the question. I want to ask about the, uh, the, the drainage pop-off for your, um, for the retention pond. Is that draining into the same tributary that the, the, the audience people were worried about the, um, the, the runoffs? It's going to the west. So it is not going, so the pop-off from that drainage will not go back into the ditch that's blocking right now? We're looking at, and um, we're actually, to help this whole situation, we, um, the developer has retained um, an engineer that specializes in master drainage studies. And we are looking at the master drainage for the entire development um, as we're going through these, um, these projects. But uh, this particular one, Ridgeside, um, the outfall will be up towards, you know, all these ponds are interconnected and the outfall will be up towards uh, the west and it will go into that canal or that ditch that runs along the FDL easement and then oh. come go south. So currently, not all of it, but anything that would be draining, hitting the, the, the streets or the houses and the lots would be captured in that retainage, that, that stormwater and going away from where their problem is right now. Right, so I mean, ultimately it, it should help, but I, I appreciate, you know, the information and like uh, Mr. Barron said, um, any, any further communication would be, you know, really helpful as we finalize our, our total design package to make sure that um, take all of that into consideration. Okay, I'm not sure if this would be you or Adam, but uh, we talked about these projects on this road before, and I believe you said that this airport road is slated to become two lane. Four lane. Four lane, no, I'm sorry, two lane each direction. Um, when that, what is the tripping point? And I'm assuming tripping point is development. Correct? Always is, yes, sir. Right. So the, the, the oxymoron here is that that road will get better. Um, I mean, you're, 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 there's going to be twice the amount of lanage and, and less blockage as the houses get put in. Where if the houses stop, it remains like it is. Correct. Yeah. Is, is, and the developments that are coming in are paying for that in uh, traffic impact fee, right? This is not a burden on the taxpayer. This is, this is gonna be paid, I'm assuming wholly by the, because um, they get, they're collecting fees from two communities here, right? So, several communities, uh, but the, um, and then what we have is a, uh, a payment, um, nothing earmarked either in the Flacker County transportation impact fee or in the, or in the Volusia impact fee. But I think there's uh, probably a, a safe argument that could be made there are impact fee credits that are available to the developer for for improvements that they make but um, you know some of that impact fee monies that are coming to the county and maybe also to Volusia ought to have some benefit to the residents here the short answer uh, is that as as everything's currently crafted uh, the master developer the CDD ultimately would be responsible for the the widening uh, the, the extra four lanes but there would that, those that, that activity would be creditable uh, for impact fees. And then, and then the, the tripping point for that is still years away. It's, it's, not, it's not necessarily tied to development as much as it's tied to trips. And so with it, this being a, a roadway that's not blocked or not exclusive, you don't have to show your Hunter's Ridge card to use the road. Uh, certainly other development's gonna cause that, that, that trip count to increase and would cause that to be front-ended rather than back-ended. I might add, um, and I think you alluded to this, but um, this project is, uh, they have a um, proportionate share agreement with the FDOT. That's right. And so there's um, several million dollars that are being paid over time to the DOT. In addition, we're paying dual impact fees, um, the county's road impact fees and the Volusia County road impact fees. So, hit from all sides. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. I have a, I have a question. Uh, 
for you. One of, there was one question whether or not there was going to be any fence um, behind. No fence is no, proposed. No fence is planned. Okay. I believe I, I will have to check on this. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe there's a 20 foot buffer. Okay, thank you. Comments or questions for the applicant? For staff? Discussing the site development plan for bridge site at all. What questions? I'm trying to get back into my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Make a motion we approve the project assuming that they're they are working on this water issue um and i'm at what drainage issue <clears throat> at what stage does that do we see the plans for that because we've seen all of that all of those surveys and whatnot so where are those reports at so related to utilities uh, really get into that as as the uh, as the plats will come in okay. and so that uh, at the time of preliminary plat, you know, th this kind of level, we're, we're having will serve commitments, things like that. W we think that's all been taken care of and is not affected by the, by the dispute that we're in. Um, ultimately, the final platting, when we get to that, that's, that's when uh, nothing can be approved until uh, those utilities are, are in place or bonded uh, at, at, at that point. Okay. But preliminary plat, back to your, your question, preliminary plat is when you'll, when you'll see that again and when we're getting uh, a step closer. We'll see some drainage plans at some point? Yes, you'll, you'll see those in, in specificity as part of the preliminary plat. So you, that's when you'll see your construction drawings and, and uh, you know, you're, you're drilling down. Again, here with this, you're a little, little high on your view. You're, you're at the zoning level. We're, we're drilling down as we go. So when they... You know, when they develop the property, they bring in fill and everything else, and they have their, their drainage plan. You know, it's going to be higher um, higher elevation in the surrounding properties. The water is going to go to them unless they have a proper plan. So we want to make sure that that's the case. I'd, I'd say that's typically the, you know, the, we'd all come back and say, well, that makes, that, that's how it should be. I'm, I'm making something bigger. But the, the other argument about it, and, and I'll, I'll say this and I'll still stand by it, an engineered system is better than a non-engineered system. And so not that it creates the, or not that it corrects the, any natural or any, any sins of the past. Uh, Water Management District generally, when they look at this, I'm probably going to state it somewhat incorrectly, is that uh, you, you can't send more water to your neighbor than what had already been coming to your neighbor. You know, here clearly, I think there's been some discussion about some stuff that's been done in the past, and that you know they're going to they're going to focus on that. And uh, you know, to the extent that they can fix it, they'll try to help. Uh, but you know, certainly there's some other things that that I think we all know. I could talk about them for longer than you want to hear me talk about activities that have happened to the north. Uh, that have impacted collectively this area and and some of that when we talk about hydro period restoration uh, some of that is the obligation of, of hunters ridge dri and the development of the hunters ridge dri to effectively make this area wet again it's it's part of the requirement from the original dri so we all need to put that into the the collective knowledge of what's happening here you know that things are going to get get wetter in certain parts of this area because it's a requirement of the dri because previous development in the area had actually drained this area. And when you look at those old topo maps, there were several areas that were clearly marked swamp. Thank you. Well, we have a motion from Mr. Corbett. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second the motion. Vote and all those in favor say aye. 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 
carries it. Moving to number nine, project 202309-0054, quasi-judicial re requiring disclosure of ex parte communications from the board. Seeing none. So I just make a note that I could not open that on this pad. Find out about it tonight. Right. Um, no, Adam, none of you? no part two. You couldn't open at all, or okay. Oh, I couldn't open part one or part two. Okay. Not also on the public link. Hmm. On my iPad. Okay. So I. Adam. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this one's oak sided Orman Station, and so this one, as the previous ones. Uh, PUD development agreement uh, in the in the PC, PUD site development plan. You can see the location on this one. This is the one to the north of of the uh, prior application. And so I, I'm going to uh, surmise that from the applicant's uh, testimony that uh, uh, comments, not while they can certainly still be made in the record, that uh, they'll be working on this one as well on the drainage question because everything flows here generally from the north to the south. Uh, but with that, um, I'll go to the drawing. Let's see. And so the orientation with this one, again, I think is going to be, um, how many pages do we end up having on this? 11. Nine, nine pages on this one, um, and then, and so you're, you're picking up here uh, to the left-hand side, the orientation here of, of this graphic is going to be north to your right, uh, south to your left, and ending in the cul-de-sac there, uh, Strickland Durance is gonna be off the page uh, to the right-hand side, and that connection that we see uh, leading from that, uh, that terminus at the north end of, of the, of the uh, Brookside, uh, Correction Ridge side development is what you'll see there to the left. And here's uh, all single-family detached, Kim, right? And so then picking up uh, uh, from where we, we basically left off, let me see if I can get a better view here by zooming out. So page uh, three, four, five, all details continuing on uh, from that. You can see the layout there. Uh, and then here's the, the temporary sales center that's being shown on the last page, I think is what we had. And so uh, consistent with what we've seen previously, we're, we're trying to give you that layout now on all of these. And I'll go now to the, the uh, development table. Sorry. Five thousand square foot on the lot size on these, uh, 20 feet width. On, on these uh, is what we had in here, 35 foot height, uh, five foot and zero. We did have the townhomes, I saw that, and that's what threw me off was we had townhomes in, in part. Um, so these are gonna be shared, uh, not duplexes, they will have that, uh, and so you don't wanna, we, we're hesitant to call these anything other than, than townhomes because they're, they're single family attached units that have that shared uh, party wall. And so we have that common townhome wall, zero feet on that. So that's why we're going down to the minimum 20 foot lot width on these. 1,250 square feet, again, the same uh, living area, the minimum living area that shows up in the others. And then again, with the 70% impervious lot coverage and not including a, uh, a, a separate uh, under roof uh, count there that uh, typically we would see the 35% as, as being a measure of under roof, this one being a measure of, of impervious area. With that, I'll uh, close with the three options we had previously, recommendation for approval of oak sided Orman Station or denial or continuance are your three options available. And again, I'll uh, close with any questions or comments and look to Ms. Buck to clean up anything I've gotten wrong. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Board have any questions for staff? Yeah, I'd like to ask Adam a question. Adam, all this, in, the, in these two projects we just talked about, all, all this uh, drainage, road drainage, county canals, uh, these development drainages are, 
all this water is supposed to end up in the Tomoka River? It, it, yes, sir. And, and so you do have uh, what had, had uh, on the east of this is, is a uh, called Groover Branch uh, that's there. And, and I, th I think what maybe the testimony had been provided before had, had that east-west that may have been broke and that before it had gone into Groover Branch. And if that, that had been severed, then you, it ain't doing what it was doing before. And so, so now what has to happen with this and, and uh, you know, to make, make that fix, uh, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna move south from here. And so what it will do, it'll, it, with these developments, it'll have to go west and then south and, and cannot then flow, flow back north to, to make it back down. And, uh, and that's just, that's how it's gonna have to be. Okay, is the um, applicant present? Would you like to come up for any presentation? Kimberly Buck, Allen Engineering Group. Uh, I think Adam covered it pretty well. Um, again, uh, the stormwater is uh, going to the west and to the south um, in this area. And the mix of um, small single family and townhome development. The applicant? Storm water is going to the west. Where is it going when it goes to the west? The, the, it varies depending on what's going where. Um, the but there, county canal or anything? The, there is that, um, the drainage ditch that runs along the FPL easement. Mm -hmm. and. But we're also required to rehydrate the wetlands. So for starters, um, the ponds will overflow into the, the wetlands on site, and then those wetlands um, will meander, and they ultimately get into that drainage ditch and then run south. And yes, and then it goes to the Little Tomoka. There are no further questions or comments for the applicant. We'll open up to public comment. I um, just need to state separately, uh, state your name and address separately so we know you guys are both okay. Hi, my name's Kelsey Pardini and I'm at 193 Carter Trail. What is this called? Seven Carter Trail. Yes. Uh, make sure that any comments do make it directly into the microphone so that we just missed your name entirely, uh, pretty much. Elizabeth Fox, 187 Carter Trail. Um, so we just were informed about this meeting today, so we tried to do as much due diligence as we could, but we weren't really prepared. So um, let me just correct that. We actually were not informed of this meeting. We saw it on the neighborhood app. Thankfully, that they had posted, sorry, that they had put, can I talk in this one too? No, okay, that they had posted, so we were not informed. So you guys had a great presentation. However, we had about a, two hours to figure out the 257 page, one document, and then the other one. Um, so we live down Duran Strickland Road towards um, the west side. Um, we're in Flagler County. And we our only way in and out of our to our homes is Durance Road, and um, as you know, Adam has stated, there is a lot of flooding that we have on that road. During this last heavy storm that we had, um, I wasn't even able to get down it for a week in my car because it was so flooded. And all that water comes from this parcel that they're trying to, to build on. Um, so. You know, them constructing homes here is just gonna cause more flooding onto our road that the county is obviously already aware of. Um, I've reached out to our county commissioner, Liam Pennington, multiple times. You know, I have video footage, photos. Um, you know, like I said, our road's impassable whenever there's a storm. So them constructing all these homes, I feel that they should have a stormwater drainage plan presented and approved before they're allowed to even start building these homes. You know, we're taxpayers, we're residents, and um, this negatively impacts us. You know, we pay almost $4,000 in taxes every year, and 57% of that goes to the general fund for Flagler County. So, you know, this should be a main issue for the county. Um, 
we did have a, one of our neighbors who about two weeks ago um, had a medical issue and she was bucked off her horse and broke ribs and um, had to be transported to a hospital. Our road was in such bad condition she could not be taken by ambulance. She had to be taken by a helicopter from the property because of Filer County's road conditions. Um, you know, we've complained numerous times about this road condition and as well as the flooding and, you know, it, we've been out there two years and we've had the flooding occur at least three or four times um, to where we can't even get in and out of our property. We don't get trash service, we can't get ambulances, we can't get fire trucks to our home if there's an emergency. Um, so. Flagler County also needs to look at this on their perspective of what needs to be done for them to bring this road up to the conditions that it should be. Um, all of this water that drains from our area goes southwest to the Tomoka River. So if Hunters Ridge is proposing to have all of their water drain into the Tomoka River, it's just going to back up more onto our road, which is going to impede us even further. Um, I just want to add something. So um, I heard uh, Adam earlier mention the hydro period restoration plan. Um, as far as I'm aware, on October 30th, Ormond Beach actually sued Flagler County and the developer because they said, allegedly, that the developer is not up to par with that. I, I might. Restoration plan. Yeah, the hydro period restoration plan. So another concern of ours is if they are actively being sued right now that their water plan isn't working. Why should we believe them that they have some kind of plans in the future that it's going to work? You know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't make any sense. We're in fear because this has been going on, like um, the developer mentioned, this has been going on for years. they are new developers, so this developer's not at fault for the previous broken promises that they said they were going to help during Slane and Leeway and all that. Um, but I really just want to stress the fact that there is an open lawsuit as of a week ago. I haven't seen any new news articles about it, so unless they've settled, um, the hydro period restoration plan is, as far as the Ormond's lawsuit says, not up to par. So that's a deep concern for us, basically saying that the water, as Kelsey was saying, is just going to impede us even more on Durant's Lane. I want to add that. Thank you. Before you go any further, can council touch on that? Yes, uh, it is true that the city of Ormond Beach filed suit against U.S. Capital Alliance and Flagler County. Part of their claim involves uh, the hydro restoration, but that has been completed in Flagler County. The lawsuit involves the hydro period restoration and its status within the city of Ormond Beach. As, as you know, this, this DRI straddles the county line. And so we're all set with that in, in our county. Uh, there might, there, there's certainly issues with Strickland Road Endurance Lane. Some of you have been on the board longer than others. Uh, you, you may have some familiarity with this issue. The county does maintain the western portion of that roadway because it's in our jurisdiction, but it, it was not an approved roadway. It was not engineered. It was not uh, done by the county. And uh, this is what happens in those situations. We've seen that in other parts of the county, like <coughs> Marine Land Acres and the Mondex, and here is yet another instance. However, uh, getting back to this road, on the eastern half of it, that's in the city of Ormond Beach, and it's not maintained at all. It, it's not owned by the city. Uh, we're not sure what to do. It's, a, it's an intractable problem that's been going on for many years. According to the residents, it is flooding with increasing frequency these days. It's getting worse, not, not staying the same. Uh, now, I don't want to get too far beyond what you've asked me, but I would, I would just say that uh, the, the drainage plan is something for this subdivision that would have to be approved uh, by the Water Management District according to their legal standards. Its impact on the roadway, uh, it's, it's going to be hard for you at this point in time at a site development plan level to know 
the impact of this development on that roadway in terms of drainage. Right. That, that really comes later. I know that's not going to be satisfactory to the, uh, to the residents here who are commenting. Uh, we, we, do, we do heed your concerns. We hear you. We know there's a problem. No one right now quite has the answer. Can I just make one more comment as well on that? Um, as well as the flooding on our road, I don't know if anyone has ever been on Airport Road or any of you have ever been there, um, but anytime there is like any little rain, Airport Road itself has standing water on it from their drainage ponds that back up onto the road. So even their current development that they have in process, the one that you guys approved, I'm not sure at what meeting that you briefly discussed in the beginning, um, where they have, I think they do have a model home or two model homes already done there. That does, that water does flood already onto Airport Road. So I, I think there's various concerns of flooding throughout all these different developments that they're just constructing. And it's just a very big concern and a life safety issue for us when we can't even get emergency access to us during you know flooding or we it wasn't even a hurricane it was just a heavy rain that we had for two days that i couldn't even leave my home thankfully i had my boyfriend's vehicle that was a truck but if not i would have been stranded at my house you know we don't get trash service during the hurricane we didn't get trash service for over two weeks you know what are we supposed to do with our our trash and all this is going to do is just cause, cause more flooding um but that they like i said they still have standing water on airport road as well, so. And I did have one other question. I was just trying to confirm what the buffer is from Strickland to where they're starting to build. We, I believe um, that the engineer said a 20 foot, but not to quote her, so. Okay, thank you. To be real clear for the board also, there is no buffer between residential and residential. I was gonna say, these are two of the same, this is the same neighboring like sister community, right? So, okay. Hi. Hi. Earlier tonight, we watched Will you send a man away to get a Will survey. Will you state your name and address? Leslie and Wright, 2461 Lipizzan Trail. Earlier tonight, we watched a fella get sent away to go get a survey for putting a carport up. And, but yet, we just sat here with all of these unresolved issues for 20 years. Imagine living like that for 20 years at your homes and see how, like, how much you would like that but we got approval without understanding what they're going to do. And they say they're going to do something because that's what they always say they're going to do. Every time you talk to them, they'll say, even the city of Ormond Beach, Steve Spraker will look you in the eye and say, there's a plan for that. And I stand up at meetings and I say, what is that plan? Because I'd like to know, because I've been fighting for it for 20 years. And knowing all that, you give it approval. And I just wanted to go on the record to say, I don't understand that process. Thank you. Is there any more public comment? Yep, you have three minutes up here at the microphone. Just need you to identify yourself by your name and your address. And then Vanna over there, I mean Adam over there, will put three minutes on the clock. Okay. Alicia Halliday, 2501 Lipizzan. Um, I was just wondering, they were saying that there is a drainage ditch along the power lines. There is no drainage ditch along the power lines. Okay. Our house is back up to that. Okay. You can ride a side by side down there, do whatever you want. There's no drainage ditch back there. And I was wondering how they plan on making airport a four lane road. How is that ever going to happen? I'm not allowed to answer you right now, but the applicant okay. does have time for a rebuttal. And on some of the paperwork, I can't pull it up in here for some reason, but you showed some drainage for these different subdivisions. Leeway. Leeway, it comes off and that floods. So I don't know, <clears throat> and on leeway, I don't know if y'all know, but in the city of Warman, they are building Tattersall on the corner of Airport and Timber Creek, which is flooded at all times. And what was, um, oh, and Tattersall is also supposed to be going, their drainage problem is supposed to be going into Grover Branch. I don't know how much Grover Branch can handle. And 
I'm just concerned. Does no one care about the animals out there? I mean, nobody cares about the wildlife. Nobody cares about our animals, our horses. We're just supposed to let little kids come over and mess with their horses all the time now because we're going to have duplexes up behind our houses. That's why we moved away. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comment? Do we have any questions? <laughs> Adam? Well, I, I think one thing I wanted to emphasize, uh, somebody had said approval. You are a recommending body, and so you, you didn't approve anything other than provide a recommendation for approval to the board. So just for clarification, and that's, that's hopefully uh, those folks who are within 300 feet who received notice had that in their notice letter that the, the next step is going to be the Board of County Commissioners. Um, Appreciate that clarification. As for the rest, I, I, I think we've got, um, we, we were at the meeting with Orman and uh, heard, heard speakers uh, in that area uh, north of Strickland Durance. It that's, was done as a minor rural subdivision. There's, um, there's no benefit of a plat there. A water management district, in fact, had been very interested in that a few years back. Uh, after what uh, Mr. Ernest Wheaton had, had done, uh, but not to say him uh, alone, uh, prior to him was, was uh, uh, Marcus Jr. Strickland who had done some development there. And then, uh, and, and I'd, I'd say for the record that our minor rural subdivision regulations that we adopted were, were with this area in mind uh, for the most part. And there is some disclaimer language that's required in the deeds uh, there in this area that the, the speaker uh, maybe had omitted that refer to this is an area where subdivisions, subdivision infrastructure has not been provided uh, in accordance with our subdivision regulations. And it does say as part of that required deed disclaimer language that Flagler County will not provide any services uh, that uh, you know, effectively you're, you're in an area where you're on your own, that, that uh, you know, there's like it or not, it was something that the, the landowners at the time had asked for in order to do these, this development of this type, to be able to divide this land without the benefit of a plat. You know, and whether that's good or bad, I, I, I can't, can't really say. Right. Uh, but it, it's, it, it was an allowance that was requested and, um, and it, it is something that's available there. I, I belabor the point just a little bit more. Um, this is probably safe to say the crux of our argument with Orman is that uh, Durance with its condition, Strickland Durance with its condition uh, that it's in, uh, where again, we're maintaining the part as best we can, which does cons consist of grading, drainage being a whole other issue there, but uh, at least the roadway itself, that part that we know that's in Ormond Beach within Volusia County is not maintained by anybody. And we think that's the problem, that's the choke point, but we, we have to have then, the access to 40 grade and the 40 grade easement that, that we've been granted. And so that's one of our points of contention with Mormon Beach that we'll likely have more discussions about, we'll make you more aware of as, as it becomes Im important to include that. But that's something the residents there, uh, both within Flagler County and within, specifically within Durance Acres in, in the city of Mormon Beach, uh, I would say rely on at the times when Strickland Road Durance Lane becomes impassable. And, and then fortunately now that's happening with greater frequency. So that's, uh, that's something I think that we're, we're gonna be talking more about as, as we progress through the, the lawsuit and, and other items. Uh, we'll, we'll bring that information forward to the board and certainly to the public as that, as that advances. Well, thank you for that, Adam. Would the applicant like time for rebuttal? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to answer each of the questions as they were asked. State your name and I'll okay. that again. Uh, Jake Barron, U.S. Capital Alliance. Um, as to the, the first couple of questions, let's start with the airport road drainage issue. Um, there is one particular inlet that has a drainage issue and that was because when it was engineered initially, and this is not through Allen Engineering Group, um, it was engineered for a 25 year flood for, for whatever reason. And it's basically at the top of bank. So as things, as it rains, water comes up, that water comes out of that pond through that inlet. We are working with, you will get a future um, subdivision map 
of C future PUD uh, for the retail on the other side of the road. And we are working to put a retention pond on that side to ease some of that drainage. So it really speaks to what we were talking about before, trying to fix some of the mistakes of the past. Um, the other issue was a hydro period restoration plan that Sean spoke to and Adam spoke to. They were specifically talking about the city's assertion is that there is a hydro period plan that had to be specifically done within a 276 acre, sorry, acre piece within Ormond Beach. Like it had to be specifically there, it had to be permitted through them, it had to be done through them. It doesn't matter if it happened already, it had to be done and permitted through them. So it's, it's really separate from whether or not a weir was installed or if a ditch was plugged. That hydro period was supposed to negate the effects of digging Hull Creek, this Hull Creek channel. Um, so by plugging that ditch and putting in a weir, it would actually put more water in the northwestern side of the site. So again, it's, it's a really a conversation I'm happy to have with individuals, but it's definitely complicated. Now this is on the northeastern side of the site. So for people all the way out west who drain southwest through um, Hull Creek and their water runs out east as well down Durrance Lane, I don't understand how this particular subdivision on the northeastern side of our property would flood them further. I am in agreement with them that Durrance Lane is a difficult road um, the Ormond Beach section is completely just not taken care of. Uh, there was a pretty intense washout on the Ormond Beach side. Uh, Flagler County does have their graders out there and they take care of that. Um, there have been multiple culverts that have been broken in the past by different individuals out there and we're trying to work to figure out how we can get some of that water to drain. But remember when you're talking about drainage, you also need to deal with the state. And you're not, I can't walk in and say, okay, you know what, at the top of 40 grade and the intersection between Shed Lane and Durrance Lane and 40 grade, let's pull water down there and then run it across to the weir and shoot it down through Hull Canal. I can't do that because the district doesn't let me do that. I can go to the district and I could potentially be the applicant, but every one of these people behind me have to be the applicant too. And so does the county. So these are really complex, and two years sounds like a long time, but it's really not. When it comes to the drainage ditch that we're talking about in the FPL, there's a historic ditch that has been there. Part of it is still open. There are culverts that run underneath that first uh, logging road and in the second one. Um, there are culverts there, and there's a ditch that runs all the way up almost the entirety of the way and that runs down to a triple culvert at the intersection of the FPL line and Airport Road, and then that runs down to a triple culvert there, trickles down past Amelia, past all those. Um, I've walked every one of those. We've opened up those ditches. We've pulled out tires that have been there for the last 20 years, and uh, we're working on getting that you know, to flow better. If you were to go there today, you don't have to trust me. You can go to where they're building that self-storage facility. That drainage is right now all the way down to the bottom. Where a few weeks ago, I agree, when we had 18 inches of rain, that was high. It really was. But now it is, it is lower because we opened up those ditches. Um, I would love to help every one of these people. I would. And that is part of what we're doing. I can't do any of that without money. And it's, it's part of the give and take of a development. We're going in. We're fixing up land. One of the residents spoke about how there's so much land that people think, do we think of the animals? We do. I absolutely do think of the animals. We have 1,900 acres. Of that, I believe there's 800 that's gonna be actually developed. The rest of it'll be preservation land. There's 2,000 acres of conservation land that the county owns now that was part of Hunter's Ridge. Um, our job is to get rid of feral hogs. I'm out there almost every day and make sure that there's no poaching. Uh, although somebody recently poached our hog hit, uh, traps, but uh, listen, <laughs> so it comes with the job. Um, and I do, I appreciate all the comments. I do. Um, as to the four lanes, there was a question there, how it's gonna be four lanes. It's a pretty wide right of way. 
if you were to drive down Airport Road, um, that whole southern side is going to be the extra two lanes. We actually got held up when we were putting in, we had to, as part of our job, we had to put in two and a half miles of sewer. So we upsized the sewer from Timber Creek all the way out till past <laughs> where, sorry, where that traffic circle is just past over there where that little New Jersey looking pond is. Um, and part of that was Ormond Beach said, we want it to be in the future median of the road. So we had to go out, get surveys of where that median is going to be, and, and that's where we put the force main, because it is very much in the plans to put in those extra two lanes. As far as the traffic is concerned, I'm sorry if I'm going out of order, there's a lot of questions. Uh, as far as the traffic is concerned, I'd say most of that traffic is further in the Ormond Beach side. There's a, there are two schools there, um, and yeah, the, the traffic does get bad there at, at three o'clock in the afternoon, which, in my opinion, if you had six lanes and you have a school, there's always gonna be a pull off, there's always gonna be a traffic guard. And I don't know how I could help that. This road was put in for Hunter's Ridge. It wasn't really a State Route 40 bypass. It is used as that now. I have no intention of gating it off ever. I would never do that. But um, it is definitely something to, you know, to think about how do you deal with the traffic. In terms of the development that's going on on the corner of Airport Road and Timber Creek, there is a large water tower over there. And Ormond Beach opens that water tower and they completely flood out that piece of property. That is not naturally occurring. That is from hundreds of gallons of water being poured out of a retention. Um, and again, that's not my business, but if, if you were to go out there, you would absolutely see a lot of standing water there. Um, Groover Branch and that, that creek. So I've seen, I've, I've gone through a whole lot of drainage studies. Um, much of that water does come from where the Ormond Crossing development will be. Um, Wayne Griffin lived where Groover Branch comes out and connects to Durrance Lane, and I, I agree that I, I've seen that area wash out completely. Um, I do think that pushing a lot of that water that's held up right now towards the west into that historic ditch, which will be fixed as part of our St. John's permit and our Army Corps permit, I do think that that will help the area. Uh, and again, if, if residents have any thoughts as to how we can fix that, I am happy to hear and happy to walk in with them. Thank you. <clears throat> any further questions or comments, board members? I have a comment. Um, I'd like to thank the public and the applicant for comments and it's amazing that you remembered every single one of those questions almost in order and were able to answer them. Um, and I want to just um, echo Adam's uh, comment on the fact that we're, we're a recommendation board. We're not here to approve or, or anything like that. Um, the suggestion that I want to make is that you guys obviously have issues out there and it's, you know, Flagler, Ormond Beach, who's doing what, and that obviously all needs to come together. Um, I, I encourage the, the developer to um, reach out, which, I mean, you obviously have offered your uh, support to them, but maybe some type of community meeting, uh, because they are part of your community, even though you're a separate development, they are part of your community to, uh, instead of having these questions come up now while we're you know, trying to make uh, a decision, cross that bridge before you guys even get here or as you guys move along, highly, highly suggested um, because they are part of your community. Um, going towards, uh, and, and water drainage is, is top of my list, my concern. Um, you know, development's gonna happen, we're, we're growing. It, you know, people need places to live. Um, the size of our properties are, are getting smaller. Um, it's just the trend that we're, we're moving in and it is what it is. Um, but with development like this, hopefully, you know, have faith in the engineers and they're gonna develop the land. Once the land gets developed, uh, engineers push the water where it needs to go and hopefully it relieves everybody. 
um, you know, and we have to have faith in the engineers to, to make that happen. Um, but really, truly reach out to your community and work with them along the way. And I think everything is going, don't, don't wait for it to get here. Um, try to get to it beforehand and it's gonna make life a lot easier for everybody. Uh, so that's just my comment. Okay. Their public comments are closed if there's nothing else for staff. I have a question for staff. Okay. Adam, do we have um, any information that any of um, these developments by U.S. Capitol will have an effect on the roads? Um, I guess you said Durant Road, is that what it was? And um, what was the other road? Strickland Road? You oh, see, Strick just we, we consider it the same road, Strickland Road in Flagler County, Durrance Lane and Ormond, what we understand, but uh, we have, have no, no information we presented about any deleterious effects to, to Strickland Durrance. Uh, and I'll tell you, at, in 2010, there had been in the prior iteration of the development order for Hunters Ridge a potential tie-in and an, an improvement requirement, but in 2010 that was eliminated from the, from the DRI development order because the developer at the time came back and said, I'm not going to use Strickland. There's, this is, I, I think probably for the reasons we're talking about now, it was going to be too hard to try to undo what had, what had been done and what had not been done. The, Orm, the Ormond side. Yes, yes, sir. And, that, and just out of curiosity, too, that side in Flagler County, that is, is that Flagler County property? That the road is on? It is, and, that, and that's the developer of, of Ormond Crossings had come to the county. I'm not going to remember the year, but it was But we been own that, that right away. We do. We do. So we are responsible or we are not responsible? We are now for the two mile portion that's within, maybe it's one and a half miles, it's within uh, Flagler County itself. But our drainage has to go into um, Ormond for it to continue, and we're getting boxed up there. Is that what the, one of the drainage problems with that we, We've done nothing to modify any drainage that was pre-existing, but the short answer there is that, yes, the Flagler County's drainage from the north does does flow from here. It flows southeast into, into uh, and I, I, that's why I was pulling this up, um, not not for the portion over here that where the, the comments were, were made about uh, Wheaton and Strickland, but uh, there is actually a canal that I, I think does run along here also uh, parallel on the north side of Strickland Durant. It's been a while since I've paid attention to how the flows work, but there's one drain here. Uh, this is uh, formerly Wayne Griffin's property, and then there's one here. Uh, and then th these are both the, the crossings across Strickland Durant that have been probably most discussed here recently, and these are both within Ormond Beach itself. And, and this portion is the one we're talking about that... Um, well, really, from from generally uh, this this point, I think it's uh, here, is the county line. Uh, so that from this point eastward is is in uh, Ormond Beach in in Volusia County. From this point westward uh, is Flagler County. And the extent of our maintenance, <laughs> legitimately, I didn't I'd admit that to everybody. It's been grading. We haven't done any work on any ditches, any swales. Uh, anything on the sides there, we've, we've strictly been involved in, in grading the, the roadway surface itself. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? I understand we're, we're a recommending body. We recommend something to the Board of County Commissioners. Feel like I'd like to recommend to them that they do something about the drainage before they cr create any more development that's going to add to the drainage problem. Um, I know it's a, it, it's a difficult situation. I live on the west side of the county, and you know, Flagler County is basically flat woods, and drainage is a problem. Flagler County is basically a retention pond, except for the north part of it. But drainage is a problem all over, and it and it take some serious, you know, some serious attention to get it done right. And uh, it ought to be looked into a little further before you add to it, uh, my thought. 
Adam, what are our guidelines with that? Because at nowhere, and, and this is something for you guys to understand too, is we have a, a set of very black and white boxes that we check as far as how we're supposed to vote on these. It's not whether or not we want 40 foot lots or whether or not we believe that you're telling the truth about swimming to your house during a hurricane. It's, we're set to a specific guidelines. So there's an order of process that things get built in. And so we, we don't have that drainage information right now because that's not where they're at. So Adam, to you, in regard to all of this and knowing that there's an order of process to build and that drainage really isn't on our, does this work because that's above our volunteer grade level, what are we able to do so that we are able to say we too are constantly hearing about the drainage issues. We're getting ready to put in thousands of more homes on very little piece of property. Can we do something? The, the uh, I guess the, the parts that I'll tell you about is are that, um, back to what I had mentioned before, water management and, and how it handles development now prohibits us from doing harm. Mm -hmm. And and so that um, I would I would argue strongly that an engineered system is preferred over what we have now, which is a lack of an engineered system. And and so I do think there's some sheet floats happening. I do think there's some sins of the past that had happened uh, by by prior developers, prior landowners. Uh, I think we all know the, the, some of those players. And so some of that is is to be undone or, or would need to be undone in order to have the improvements uh, placed within these subdivisions. But I, I don't, I don't want to oversell what, a, what I can't, that the, the district to, to the degree that it handles its stormwater permitting. Uh, the current design is a 24 hour, 25 year storm event. I think I'm stating the right order. I always flip those. And then I think you had testimony from the representative for the developer that, and I've heard this from other engineers that, that that do this work, and I think that's what had been said, is that Kim Buck doesn't design to that. She designs to a greater standard, and, and others have done this similarly, where you have a minimum, but they design intentionally higher because they don't want to have the complaints that come back, if nothing else, within their development. That's the, the degree of their, their involvement. They're, they're not trying to solve the sins you know, that, are, that are elsewhere. You know, and certainly I appreciate Mr. Barron's comment that, that uh, I think we, we lose that, that sight, uh, that recognition that developers aren't altruistic. They're, they're profit motivated, they're profit generating. Their endeavors are, are to make profits for their investors, for their people. At the same time, that doesn't obligate anyone to approve garbage, but, but I, you know, remembering here that this is a DRI with a master plan that has a package of rights that says development's gonna occur here in this area in this proximity to the folks that are on the east side of this. And, and really what we're talking about here is probably the nuances of how that's gonna, how that's gonna look, the, the 20 foot setback distance, um, the, the fact that the drainage will be designed so it flows from the east to the west and is collected there and then, and then flows south from there. And so some of that's gonna be the, you gotta, you gotta trust the engineers, the, the folks that are involved with this, that it's gonna happen that way. Does that mean your house is going to flood uh, tomorrow uh, or after this is done? You know, no, it, 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 uh, it doesn't give you any assurance. You, know, you can't come back later and say, well, you know, this happened and it's because of that that I'm, I'm flooding. I think uh, Mr. Boy was right on track too. That my, my several predecessors ago in, in my seat had defined the area of Flagler County as poorly drained Piney Flatwoods. And when you think about it, and those that have heard me preach about this and I've already have gone beyond where I should, but Flagler was formed from the, it wasn't formed from the best of St. John's and the best of Volusia. It was formed from the part that nobody wanted in those two counties. And so that, that doesn't really create a, 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 a rationale for an apologist argument now, but it's no, no joke to any of us or no surprise to any of us that Volusia didn't give up the best of its lands and St. John's didn't give up the best of its lands to form Flagler County. It, it's, it was the basin in between. Yeah. And so, you know, we've, we've talked about it internally and, and we know that, you know, we're, we're land poor. The stuff that's left is the, is the, the it's the stuff that's left. And, and there are challenges with it, but this particular development has its package of development rights. And for them to proceed as they are, they're, they're within their legal parameters. So back to your question, Matt, Madam Chair, that uh, 
this meets our requirements for not only your review for recommendation, whether it's for approval or denial, you, you have that, that information that you need sufficient to do that, in my opinion, to be able to make that recommendation. And then likewise, for the Board of County Commissioners to be able to make their decision on these PUD level decisions. Again, we'll drill down closer as we get into this. Right. We'll have the plat information that will come forward with great specificity on the construction drawings and showing you how that's gonna be designed there from a, from a construction standpoint. And so we'll, we'll get there closer, but at this point, I don't think you have anything that's been omitted from your review. Got them. Board members. I mean, the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the pre and post effect is still going to be a standing rule that they cannot make this worse for their neighbor's property. Whether or not he fixes their problems is a different story, but the St. John's permit and the engineering that will follow and the construction that will have to happen according to that permit will not allow them to make this flood on the neighbor's property. Am I correct? Sir, we, we have to depend on the water management for that. Yes, sir, you are right. correct. Well, the engineers and the water management, too. Right. You know, we don't, you know, our, our county doesn't personally review that. We allow them to do, but that is what the, what the ordinances, state ordinances are yes, doing. Sir. I'm going to make a motion to approve the application. Um, based on we can't get to the next step without our recommendation um, to so just based on that I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend uh, approval okay we have a first motion do we have a second I'll second the motion first we have a second we'll move to a vote all those in favor say aye 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 aye, aye. Okay. Four eyes, one nay. Moving to number 10, application project number 202-310024, quasi-judicial, requir requiring disclosure of ex parte communication board members. No, again, I, I could not read this either. Okay, finish with the expectation staff. Are you ready to proceed with your presentation? Yes, ma'am, I am. This one and the next item both are coming in. Uh, if you recall, and, and uh, I don't remember if I put it in the in each of these packets, but these are uh, previously approved PUDs. Uh, they're they're a little older, and so what had happened was they they predate the ownership group that's now uh, working in Hunters Ridge. They predate uh, D.R. Horton coming in with its Orman Station concept. And so what we have is, is we have older language that needs to be cleaned up. And so when I made that reference to the lot coverage versus impervious, you know, that's, that's our biggest concern here is that um, when we came forward uh, with D.R. Horton advancing its product, uh, the lot coverage harms them because it, it doesn't allow them to do the development uh, that, that they are intending to, to complete here within both Celadine and Iris, the former Celadine and Iris, uh, now Grove side and Garden side for each of these. And so uh, absent that, these, these developments, especially uh, this first one, uh, Garden side, I think I got that right, Celadine, formerly Celadine, is already platted. And so you can see the, the layout here. Uh, you know, it seems maybe contrary to your thinking. It's like, well, well why are we doing this? Because things already platted, it's the dimensional requirements, specifically the lot coverage that's our concern here with this. And this was admittedly discovered uh, when uh, the developer, D.R. Horton, came in to, to complete its models. I also admit for the record that as these had both progressed, we went back and looked. I, I'll take the blame because uh, I, don't, I, I probably am the reason why it happened. We had referenced, as we see here, and, and maybe I still need to do some, some fixing on this language, uh, where the base district is the R1D, 
and then it varies in the following. And, and then we listed dimensional requirements that vary from the R1D, and it admittedly, this, this isn't really the R1D anymore. It's specific to this development, specific to Saladine. And so what, what had been there before is you had this lot coverage language that we had this 35%, and this needs to come out. Uh, I thought this was the, this is the existing, this is 2017-06. And so this is the existing language here with the 5,000, the 35 foot, the lot coverage at 35%. Let's see if the other language made it in. That may be part of the problem then too. I don't see it in your packet. Let's see if it's in this other one. So here's the draft here for IRIS. I thought it was in here, but the, the language then would be similar to here for IRIS. And what's happening in both of these is the strike through for the lot coverage. You'll see the, uh, the, the it's instead in, expressed as impervious lot coverage instead of lot coverage in our typical terminology restricted to square footage under roof. And so that's the changes that are happening basically to both of these. Uh, no, that's a bit convoluted in my explanation. We really didn't do anything else uh, with these. Uh, the Celadine garden side is the one that uh, has platted the ir uh, grow side. Iris garden side is coming forward um, and is nearing its, its point of, of being final platted on its side, and so that uh, both of these are at the point where model home development is being uh, being advanced. With that, I'll await questions or comments from the board, and again, Kim can clean up most of what I just said, but that was the issue, was the, the lot coverage. The intent is to have the language match what's become a template now for us, and so where we don't have a separate lot coverage reference with, a, with an impervious reference, it's all covered under impervious. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Board members, do you have any questions or comments for staff? Yeah, I just want to clarify. Also, all you're saying that, because again, I wasn't able to read this at all. The only thing we're voting on today is the change to the word saying maximum impervious lock coverage being 70%. I, I, the bottom line is yes, but I also what I did was instead of, and you, you see it in the staff report, which you didn't get a chance to look at because you couldn't pull it up, but I went through and said I took these and put them into the new format. So since these were done in 2017 and 2018, we've changed how we did it. And I, I originally I was going to leave them in that old format, but I didn't want to have the problem at the Board of County Commissioner level where we've, we've had some pretty substantial changes to these. Uh, about tree preservation, about um, uh, the sidewalk language. We've, we've got that template boiled down pretty good. And so what I did was I, I took all of that information uh, for both of these and put it into the new format. And so, but the, the, the bottom line change that's happening here is that lot coverage. Would the applicant like to come up for a presentation? Buck, Allen Engineering Group. Um, our biggest uh, concern with the with the uh, original 35% is we were ending up with really tiny houses, um, and so this allows us to, um, you know, do the 70% impervious, uh, which allows the two-car garage and the um, the two-car driveway, and allows for a porch or a patio on the on the back side of the house, um, and uh, just to give you a little bit of assurance, the the original design for stormwater was based on 70%. So it, it is covered um, under the design of the, the development. Okay. Thank you. Board members, do you have any questions or comments from the applicant? Are there any public comments who would like to... What's record? Seeing as there are none, I will bring it back to the board. Are you guys sure you don't have any questions or comments? Okay. Motion. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion from Langello. I'll no second. From Boyd. Both said it at the same time. Sorry. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Number 11 on our agenda this evening. 
Project number 202-310-0026, Quasi-Judicial Requiring, dis requiring Disclosure. Board members, anything to disclose? Adam? Not much to add here with this. Uh, same changes as the, as the prior one. This is not currently platted, but is advancing forward. It, we have had a preliminary plat approval on this, and this does have the uh, only changes being made uh, is to the lot coverage, that removing that lot coverage and retaining the 70% impervious. With that, I'll close, wait any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Board members, are there any questions for staff? Would the applicant like to come up and present? Is there any public comment that would like to be made? Yeah, I'll close public comment and bring it back to the board. If there's nothing left for staff. I will make a motion to approve. One motion by Langello, second by Langello. Move with a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Staff, do you have any comments for us? No, you've heard enough. Thank you. Um, You're not staff. We have a regular meeting next <laughs> month, and, and uh, we have a regular meeting next month, and then in January, regular meeting, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And as we're sitting now, we will have, uh, Gina, we have items, don't we, forthcoming, potentially to the mm. December. I think we, we, yes, we may. We'll stand by because we, one, one uh, just for the benefit of any public that may be tuning in, uh, we still have outstanding, if you recall, from the previous agenda. Uh, those two, future land use and the rezoning, uh, may come forward. Uh, at this point, uh, the request was not to complete the public notice that we had discussed uh, previously, and so that may come forward in December. We also may have a, a PUD and potentially preliminary plat coming forward. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, yes. Also, uh, we did get some guidance from the County Commission on the uh, intent of that comprehensive land language on the barrier island about areas of native vegetation. So I'm not, I'm not prepared tonight to explain it, but uh, we'll uh, maybe build that into a future meeting. Okay. Thank you, staff. Board comments? You've already had your turn. Yes, ma'am. Okay, public comments. Anything public comments that is not on this agenda? Not on the agenda? Or whatever you want to say. Okay, Elizabeth Fox, 187 Carter Trail. I did have a question. Um, now that we understand you guys don't fully approve and it goes somewhere next month, um, are the Flagler County residents of Durrance going to be notified? Because we were not of this meeting. They won't. So. That's okay. what I wanted to know. And is that because that's Ormond Beach, Volusia County, or? Because our, our, our requirement is a 300-foot radius from the property. I see. And so we, we don't inform those who are outside of the radius. By, you, by you, law, that's our, our you notice. You can contact them yep. and, and ask them. Right. Public information, and they will tell Every you. Every Friday. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. As of now, it, it would be uh, December 18th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, Kelsey Pardini, 193 Carter Trail. I just had a question as well. For the stormwater uh, drainage plan that they're gonna propose, is, is that supposed to go back before this committee to review before it goes to the county commissioners to be approved or what's the process for that exactly? Well, we, we, we are now talking about an application, so we're, we're not yeah, talking we're not generally. We're not more public, um, and We close that out, but I, I, can, I can answer uh, the, the specific stormwater plan for that development will come forward as part of the plat submittal. Okay, so it will come before this committee to before review? planning and development. And does anybody board. from the county actually look at that? We do. Which department looks at that exactly? Growth Management Growth Department, Management. Development Engineering. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Any more public comment? Turn. Second. Third. Thank you this evening for everybody's participation. Have a great, safe, thankful Thanksgiving. Yes, you too. Thank you. <laughs>